All right, so here we go. Let's jump right into this city skyline tutorial. Extremely easy. I know you guys have seen this get done either by me or someone else. Um, if you're confused about any spray paint art materials, I'm going to leave a link in the description to a video that I've made already covering that. But let's begin. So the first thing you need to do is figure out what colors you want your city to be. So for this, I'm going to choose like blues i'm gonna just hit it with a bunch of shades of blue you can use just one color if you want to but just go ahead and kind of get some color some sort of first layer down and i think i'm just going to do like that medium blue in the middle there i'm going to do a light blue on top and then i'm going to do a dark blue on the bottom like i said though if you just want to keep it simple just hit it with one color now if you're using something like poster board uh, or like a hard surface that's not soaking up paint like a cotton canvas wood let the paint sit here for a couple of minutes okay let it sit here for like three to five minutes just to let it semi dry before you move on to the next step but the next step is just go ahead and make your painting go ahead and do your thing i'm just going to go ahead and speed through this part to make all of our lives a little nicer until we reach the part where we want to do our city We, go. we have our background it's something too crazy but it's fun and we got a bunch of eclipses and stuff now we're going to go ahead and do our city so for this there's a few options that you have you're just going to basically need some sort of straight edge so my personal choice is the angle palette knife i love this thing i use this literally every painting you can also use a putty knife now if you don't have anything like that just lying around go ahead and get yourself some poster board like material this is just packaging that came around the canvas and tear off a piece that has a flat side like this. And you can use this for your city tool. You're also gonna need some secret sauce, some clear coat. Right, this is what it looks like. Walmart, Home Depot, I don't know why I'm explaining it. If you're confused, just, cl just click on the video uh, in the description. But what we're gonna do is just re-wet all of this paint where our city's gonna be, so basically this bottom half. You're gonna take your tool of choice and I'll get you guys out of the booster seat to give you guys a better angle. But you're just going to put your straight edge down and scrape in some stuff. You're just going to scrape in some stuff. Do whatever kind of buildings that you want. If you want a box building, we're just going to go straight across. And then one thing I like to do is I like to drag my knife down like that. It's more out of habit than anything else. Okay, but it does give it a nice, like, defined line on the side. I really like that. If you want to make your buildings 3D, what we can do is just go back to that building right there on the side. And we're just going to kind of bring it down at an angle. Once again, I just like to swipe it down. Now we have a 3D like box looking building. I like to do a bunch of alien stuff for those of you who know me. So I like to do a lot of just like pointy buildings, lots of squiggles, which we could do with this tool as well. But let's get you guys out of the booster seat and show you exactly what the fuck is going on. We have our straight edge. We're just placing it down, swiping across, right? That's it, that's all we're doing. And I recommend we go ahead and we keep a lot of these buildings separate. See how we're, they're not all connected right away? I think it's so just the way that I like to do it, but I like to kind of separate a bunch of like taller buildings first, and then I like to go in with a second layer of buildings or a third layer of buildings, four layers. It really doesn't matter how many layers you do, um, to just to fill it up. Like we're, we're, it's a good way to, an easy way to add depth to it. So let's go ahead and just add a bunch of like taller buildings. And I'm just putting some more clear coat down. If it starts getting difficult to scrape, you just want, need more clear coat. And notice as well, and this is a recycled canvas. We had some sort of painting underneath. But it looks like, I'm just going to see if I can bring that up a little bit. It looks like it's a little brighter at the top. That's where our light blue was. And then it gets darker with that medium blue. And then as we keep going down, we're going to get to that darker part of that dark blue. All right. So we have a lot of these tall buildings in the back. Now, Here's what I would recommend for beginners. We have all of our tall buildings, right? Go ahead and pick some sort of dark paint. So you can pick black, but we also have like a lot of blue and stuff. So you can pick like something like dark blue, which is what I'm going to do. You're going to find your distance, right? So this is too close. That's too close. No bueno, right? Pull it back and everyone's distance is going to be different, but we want that nice separated misty sort of look. And where we're going to be aiming is right underneath our buildings here, not at the bottom of the buildings not at the top of the buildings underneath the buildings, let the overspray do most of the work. We just want to add some sort of separator here so we can actually see this next layer and have a lot of contrast and a lot of pop to it. Let's go ahead and add more secret sauce. 
And when it comes to these second, third layers, I usually just kind of scribble them in. I like I don't really do as much, spend as much time uh, as I did on the tall buildings back there. I'll just kind of go in and like scrape in an entire line of buildings. And one thing I did right here as well, just to talk about some like common things that I see that I guess I see as things to improve on. Or I'll be honest, I see them as mistakes. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, okay? Um, is if you use too much clear coat, which I just did that right here. So it becomes a little soupy, right? Especially right there, you can see it. We have that just big puddle of paint and you can, you can see it on the back layer too, but it's not as bad. If you use too much clear coat, you'll get that big muddly puddly mess. So just be careful, right? Do small bits of clear coat uh, at a time. So maybe just a little bit of clear coat, test it out. If it's still a little too difficult to scrape, then go ahead and add, add, go ahead and add a little bit more, if I could speak. Go ahead and add another layer though. So I'm gonna take that dark blue again. I'm just gonna add another layer of dark blue right there. And we're gonna do some water down here at the bottom. Which I guess I wanted to teach, uh, I wanted to do a water tutorial again next week. But we can go ahead and just do one of those now as like a little bonus. But I do want to add just one more layer of buildings down here. And don't think that these, these last layers need to just be small buildings, right? We can go ahead and make a big one right here. Like you can make some big ones. You can even do things like bridges as well, which we're gonna have some water going on. So I mean, fuck it, right? So let me actually add a little bit more dark blue right here. Add a little bit more clear coat. But well, we can even go ahead and just make the supports of the bridges first. This is the way that I like to do it, right? So we have two little beams right there. And then I like to just go in, let's see if I could do this while holding the canvas. I like to just kind of go in with the point of my angled palette knife and just kind of connect the beams together. You can go ahead, sometimes I'll make an X in there too, but it can look like a bit much sometimes. Let's go ahead and make another support set right here. Just barely scraping my knife across We'll go ahead and connect those. And then what I'm gonna do is just take the point of my angle palette knife again and make the actual road of our highway. Just like that, just a little arch. And then we can go ahead, and I think we'll do one more set, actually. We'll do one more set of uh, support beams. And then go ahead and make your cables, your wire, your rope thingies. Right, so this technique can be used for a lot. Don't think you're just stuck with like buildings and skyscrapers and stuff like that. This is a great point to start, so I recommend it for beginners. Because once you master it, you'll understand that the possibilities are endless with it. We have our little bridge. All right, and then let's just go ahead and do the water. This is actually the same exact technique. So like I was saying, this technique is versatile with the scraping and with the knife and stuff. But what I'm gonna do is just cover this with black. And you could take, the, I wouldn't use the angle palette knife for this. I would use something a little bit bigger. And you can, you can use like the putty knife or you can just use what I'm gonna use here, that poster board like material. I'll do half of it with you guys in the booster seat and then I'll try to get you guys down at a different angle. But we have this flat side, we're gonna put it down at the top here and we're just gonna scrape back and forth. Just kind of swiping back and forth and I'm moving my way down, right? Kind of moving my way down. I'm just gonna kind of hold you guys right here to see what's going on, but we have our little poster board down. We have our flat edge down, right? And we're just scraping it to the right and to the left, and we're just moving down a little bit. It's really difficult to do with one hand, but you guys should get the idea. It's just like that. We have a bunch of like ripply, wavy sort of water down here. Now, usually I would go ahead and separate it like with a different color instead of the color of my city. Well, one thing we can do is just go back to that water line there and I'm gonna spray the tool with some white to give it a nice crisp white highlight and also to kind of let people know these are two separate things, right? Kind of kind of separate them a little bit more. So I like to add a bunch of squiggles up to the eclipses and the planets. I like to, I just see like planet rings as like roads. I don't know, I think it's really cool. Let's just do a planet ring over here. Same exact technique too. Right? Like I said, extremely versatile. We're just taking that knife. I'm just gonna kinda try to wipe it off a little bit. Right? And this is how we can do our planet rings. I forgot to cover this last week. Right? But we're just gonna kinda make a swoosh. 
go back to the other side, make a little switch, and we have a little planet ring there. But if you guys have any questions, let me know.